Well, hey guys, in today's video, we're going to be talking about everything you need to know about those pesky canker sores. Let me know in the comments, do you get canker sores? They're very uncomfortable. Canker sores are also called aphthous ulcers. They can happen inside the mouth, but in some cases they also can happen in the genitalia. They appear as these punched out ulcers inside the mouth, whether it be the surfaces inside the cheeks, inside the lips, or along the tongue. Sometimes they can also happen in what is called the soft palate. That's basically the back of the roof of your mouth. Anyone can get canker sores. It's estimated that about 20% of the population deals with one or more canker sores occasionally. But in some cases, getting canker sores can be a sign of an underlying medical condition, like uh, an autoimmune or inflammatory condition, such as something called Bichette's disease. Some people with Crohn's disease or ulcerative colitis also deal with aphthous ulcers. They often start out as these soft yellow bumps with the surrounding rim of redness, and then they ulcerate, meaning they get shallow, and that's really when they're painful. There are actually a few different types of aphthous ulcers. Minor aphthous ulcers, probably what you have dealt with in your lifetime. Minor because they are small in size, less than five millimeters. These usually go away within one or two weeks on their own, and importantly, they do not scar. There's also major aphthous ulcers. These are much larger, usually greater than 10 millimeters in diameter. They are a lot more stubborn. They stick around longer usually a couple of months before they go away. And when they go away, they leave a scar behind, unfortunately. Then there is a type called herpetiform. Sounds like herpes, but it's not the same thing. Herpetiform because they take on the shape of little tiny pinpoint ulcers that are clustered together. Herpetiform aphthous ulcers typically occur on the tongue in older adults. Fun fact, this is one of those rare instances where smoking is actually protective. What? <laughs> However, I do not recommend smoking. Smoking causes all sorts of problems to your health, so I do not recommend starting smoking in an effort to get rid of or suppress aphthous ulcers. Please do not do that. Aphthous ulcers are a pain to deal with, but they are not harmful to your health, whereas smoking causes all sorts of harmful effects to your health. Why do we get canker sores? Unfortunately, we don't entirely know the full story as to why people get canker sores. There is likely an underlying genetic component because about 40% of people who deal with canker sores have a family history of canker sores. So to some extent, you probably can blame your parents for getting canker sores. But uh, it's also the working theory that in some people, their immune system is such that it decides for whatever reason that it doesn't like some sort of external factor, some sort of trigger. And in response to that, it, it decides to attack proteins in the mucosa inside your mouth or in cases of genital ulcers inside the mucosa of the genitalia. And one of the reasons why smoking cuts down on canker sores probably has to do with the fact that smoking is immunosuppressive. So your immune system is so weak from the smoking that it can't really go on to do this. While we don't know what causes canker sores, there are certainly consistent triggers. Now, as with anything, what triggers one person's problem will not be an issue for someone else. So being aware of potential triggers and then nailing down what it is for you, that way you can try and avoid triggers or modify your behavior accordingly. One of the main triggers, unfortunately, is emotional stress. Being under a lot of stress, it's not good for us. It's a delicate balance though, and it's, it's always a hard place to guide people in what is the right direction for them because it's just easy to say, you know, cut down on stress, but that can be very difficult. Um, and we know that actually some amount of stress is good for our body. So you don't wanna eliminate stress completely. Like it's good to challenge yourself to a certain extent, otherwise you become weak and you know just as vulnerable to problems. But I think we all have a good understanding of when we have spread ourselves too thin, when we have overextended ourselves, when we are getting run down. A lot of times this happens, maybe when you're traveling a lot, your schedule is disrupted, you have a lot of things on your plate, or maybe there's there are things that are happening in your life that you have no control over, lots of social stressors going on, whether it be financial, in relationships, at work, outside of work, friendships. There's so many potential things for causing someone to have an unnecessary amount of stress above and beyond what they can even manage to control. Having 
coping mechanisms in place that are healthy for managing your stress is ideal. Practicing self-care, going on walks, journaling, practicing mindfulness. These little habits can help you out a lot when you are under a lot of stress. Nothing feeds stress more than lack of sleep. And lack of sleep is definitely a trigger for canker sores. There have been studies that actually suggest that at least in college students, staying up late may be associated with recurrent aphthous ulcers. Now, I am someone who stays up late and that doesn't seem to bother me. I think some of us are just night owls by habit, but I think if you are getting in the habit of sacrificing sleep, staying up too late, and then having to wake up early, you know, you're narrowing your window of good restorative sleep, uh, you're restricting it, and you're not able to heal and recover, that takes a toll on the immune system and it can rebel in ways like formation of aphthous ulcers. Trigger number three is mechanical trauma inside the mouth. Let me know in the comments if you, you had braces as a child or if you currently have them. Um, the braces themselves can actually just cause some mechanical trauma to the mucosa and elicit uh, aphthous ulcers. You know, your immune system, it, it, it rebels and trauma inside the mouth can kick these off. Another potential trauma to the mouth is certain foods can be uh, really harsh on like the roof of your mouth. Uh, I'm looking at you, Captain Crunch, that is a cereal that is notorious for like destroying the inside of your mouth and the roof of your mouth. You know how like certain snack foods are just really hard on the inside of your mouth, especially those that have like certain kind of flavor coatings. So that for someone who has canker sores, that definitely can be a trigger because you're inciting irritation into the mucosa, bringing in your immune system. And there it is, it attacks likely a protein in the mucosa there and boom, you get a you get a canker sore. A lot of times we might accidentally bite the inside of our mouth or bite our tongue and that can elicit a canker sore pretty easily. I think that is one of the most consistent histories that I hear from people who deal with canker sores is, oh man, I bit my tongue and the next thing I know, I got a canker sore. Diet plays a huge role in our total body health. B12 deficiency and folate deficiency are associated with more recurrent aphthous ulcers. Uh, our you know, canker sores, as well as all sorts of other problems in the mouth. If you'll recall from my video on signs of B12 deficiency, a swollen red painful tongue is a manifestation of B12 deficiency. If you're someone who has a tendency to develop canker sores and you become low on B12, likely gonna kick it off for you. Why this happens, we're not entirely sure. B12 plays a vital role in as a, as a coenzyme um, for the synthesis of proteins, lipids. It's also really important for formation of new healthy blood cells. And so when it's not teed up optimally, when the levels are you know not optimal, then that can result in your immune system acting up. And the inside of the mouth is actually you know a common area where problems arise in the setting of low B12. And a lot of people may be under the impression that low B12 is just something that people people who exclude animals from their diet deal with. But uh, you may not be aware of this, but once you get into your older adult years, the absorption of B12 can go down quite a bit. So older adults don't absorb B12 as well. There are also certain medications that interfere with optimal absorption of B12. And uh, there are underlying autoimmune conditions, namely pernicious anemia, uh, where your immune system decides that it's going to rebel against the cells that make important stuff for absorbing B12. So there are many situations outside of just excluding animal products from your diet that can lead you down the path of B12 deficiency. Similarly, folic acid is involved in the formation of blood cells. It's really important for the synthesis of uh, factors that are necessary for metabolism of fats and proteins. So when that goes awry, you know, levels of that are not optimal, well then it definitely can impact the mucosal surfaces of your mouth. Speaking of diet, another trigger for canker sores, unfortunately, are just certain foods can be low-grade irritating to the lining of your mouth. Spicy foods, uh, chocolate, unfortunately, a lot of people report as a trigger for canker sores. Any kind of acidic fruits, vegetables, vinegars, especially pineapple is a common trigger. Carbonated beverages, likewise, are a common trigger. This has been my observation that a lot of the foods that can aggravate and elicit formation of canker sores trigger their recurrence in people are similar foods to what trigger rosacea. And it may be, you know, I see a theme in that a lot of the foods that aggravate and lead to canker sores reoccurring in people are those that are high in cinnamaldehyde, cinnamic acid, similar to 
things that aggravate rosacea. And these compounds cause vasodilation and can be irritating. Then you also have to think about kind of what I talked about earlier about foods that just cause a lot of mechanical trauma in your mouth, like sharp snack foods or sharp candies. A lot of chips nowadays are just so coated in intense flavoring to give you that immediate pleasurable experience but it really can't aggravate canker sores for a lot of people. So, you know, you may need to steer clear of those or just, you know, consume them in moderation. When you do eat those foods though, and things like that, make sure that you follow it up with a lot of water to kind of adequately rinse and lubricate the mouth. That definitely can help. Another major trigger though, that could be related to foods or could be related to other things going on in your life for canker sores is actually dry mouth. Loss of or decline in production of saliva can leave the mucosa very vulnerable to irritation. The autoimmune condition Sjogren syndrome affects the salivary gland. They have a decrease in output of saliva and they deal with dry mouth. And a remedy for that for those patients is to use uh, lozenges and to use these um, hydrating mouth rinses to just help rewet the mucosal surfaces. So if you find that you're dealing with these, those kinds of things may be helpful to you to help with the dry mouth that can aggravate and elicit more canker sores. All right, I've talked about this on here before, but not in the context of aphthous ulcers, AKA canker sores, and that is toothpaste ingredients. Toothpaste ingredients can be pretty irritating. That being said, toothpaste with fluoride is a very important aspect of oral hygiene and preventing cavity formation. But certain ingredients in toothpaste can just be irritating, whether it be inside your mouth or if the residue gets on the skin around your mouth, it can aggravate and trigger perioral dermatitis. But inside the mouth, it also can be irritating and elicit canker sores coming out. So what ingredients do you need to be mindful of? Intense flavors. Cinnamon, especially, as well as mint, wintergreen. But it's not just the intense flavors. The other culprit in toothpaste that you need to be aware of is actually uh, the foaming agent, agents that lead to make the toothpaste foam a lot. So if you deal with canker sores, consider switching over to a children's toothpaste that is free of or low in SLS and has a berry or more fruity flavor, those tend to be less irritating to both the skin as well as the mucosa. Hormonal changes can really influence the health of the mucosa in your mouth and your gums. And you'll notice this at key hormonal milestones, events, if you will, throughout your life. First of all, it's puberty. With puberty, there are a lot of hormonal changes in, in girls, increase in estrogen, that affects the gums, and then that can be a time where you start getting a lot more canker sores or dealing with them. The increases in estrogen lead to an increase in blood flow to the gums, and so the gums can become more you know, inflamed, and the mucosal surfaces also are just more hyper-irritable during that period of time. Then you have your menstrual period. One to two days before your period, your gums can become very sensitive and the inside of your mouth can also be you know more vulnerable to irritation that's likely related to an increase in the hormone progesterone you know if you go on oral contraceptive pills aka birth control pills um, depending on their formulation they can impact blood flow in the mouth and make you more vulnerable to uh, those canker sores coming out then there's pregnancy Pregnancy is a time where you are a lot more likely to have bleeding of your gums, swell, swollen gums, uh, but likewise, the mucosa, all mucosal surfaces um, get kind of a little swollen throughout pregnancy, during pregnancy. For example, when you're pregnant, you're, you get a lot more nasal stuffiness. Same thing with other mucosal surfaces. They're just a lot more swollen. I mean, you have a lot more fluid in your body and all of these things, plus the changes in hormones uh, can just really make the mucosal surfaces a lot more hyper irritable and your immune system being like, I don't have time to tolerate this, that, or the other. I'm gonna make this painful little sore for you because why not? <laughs> then there's menopause. You know, we talk about with menopause being a time where there's a decline in estrogen. You have loss of collagen related to that. The skin becomes drier, uh, fewer moisturizing factors. Inside your mouth, you also have 
a, a decrease in the production of saliva and you may start dealing with more kind of dry mouth, mouth symptoms. Dry mouth can bring out those canker sores. The other thing that can start to manifest around menopause and thereafter is osteoporosis, bone loss, and that can affect the bones in your jaw and lead to um, you know mechanical changes that make you more vulnerable to maybe trauma in the mucosa and elicit those canker sores. Outside of our hormones, certain medications can also set you up for bouts of canker sores. Any medication that affects the sal salivary gland and leads to decrease in saliva and has a side effect of dry mouth can set you up for recurrent canker sores. Last but not least, uh, having any kind of viral infection can trigger canker sores. I mean, you get very run down when you have like a cold or a flu from a virus and it leaves you more prone to canker sores. Speaking of virus, something that sounds like canker sore in your mind maybe, or you know, you think it's the same thing, but is not. And that is a cold sore. A cold sore is just a popular term for a uh, reactivation of herpes simplex virus. Herpes simplex virus we acquire when we're a child and it can cause, in some people, these sores on the, on the mouth. In contrast to recurrent aphthous ulcers, or AKA canker sores, cold sores are outside of the mouth, usually on the lips. You get a grouping of little blisters, very, very painful. Uh, and you know, after a, a, about a week, goes away. But in contrast to canker sores, this is related to the herpes simplex virus. Check out my video all about cold sores. I go into more details there about triggers and how to you know, deal with them, get rid of them. I will link that video down below in the description box um, in case that's something that you're dealing with. So if you deal with canker sores, how the heck do you get rid of them? Like, what are you supposed to do with them? They're miserable, they're not comfortable. Unfortunately, there is no cure for canker sores. <laughs> the goal with treatment of canker sores is to lessen the pain and the symptoms associated with them. And being mindful of triggers and avoiding them can definitely help in cutting down on recurrences. Your doctor can prescribe you a um, topical medication that goes inside the mouth. You can put it over a canker sore and it'll just act as a barrier preventing irritants from getting in that cause pain. There's also a topical anesthetic called benzocaine that can help with the pain and discomfort. I find that the use of silver nitrate sticks can be very helpful for patients who have very painful aphthous ulcers. It's basically a chemical that is applied and kind of ca it cauterizes and, and creates like a, a barrier almost to help cut down on irritants penetrating into that ulcer. I already mentioned this, but seriously consider switching your toothpaste over to SLS free, just much less irritating to the mucosa and switch over to like a fruity flavor away from the strong mints, cinnamons, and winter greens that can be just a little bit more irritating to the mucosa. For some people using an antibacterial mouth rinse like Listerine can be helpful because you know, bacteria and candida yeast in the mouth uh, can be irritating to the mucosa and incite uh, your immune system to come in. And in some cases, using a antibacterial mouth rinse like Listerine may help in cutting down on recurrences of canker sores. Try and avoid trigger foods, or again, when you are eating foods that are more irritating, like acidic or spicy foods, make sure that you are drinking water and kind of rinsing out the inside of your mouth in between bites so that it doesn't you know, collect there and irritate the inside of your mouth. Also have a chat with your healthcare provider. Make sure there's no underlying vitamin or mineral deficiency if necessary, you may need to take a supplement. Not everyone needs to take a supplement, and just because you have these doesn't mean that you are deficient or need a supplement. So best to figure out if you have one because, you know, if you don't need to take something, don't just take it. And of course, lower your stress and manage your sleep. <laughs> Good luck with that. I know it's hard. Uh, anyway, y'all, that is canker sores. They're not fun, but they are pretty common. I really hope you enjoyed today's video. If so, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.